to the sound of that chicken. It's ridiculous. So there are a couple of secrets for getting this chicken super awesome. First one is the marinade. So I'm gonna start off with some garlic. Okay, I just need a rough chop on those. All right, and now I want the coriander stems and root part because that holds a whole bunch of flavor. Save those coriander leaves for later. And now for the spices. And this is really what kind of sets this chicken apart, the southern fried chicken from a regular fried chicken in Thailand. So I've got some cumin seeds and you could use ground cumin, but I like to add in the seeds because even though we're gonna blend this, you still get these little sort of pops of cumin flavor as you're eating the chicken. Okay, and I want a really good helping of ground white pepper. So the main flavors here should really be that garlic and pepper flavor. And then I want a little bit of turmeric and that's gonna give us a little bit of nice color. And now for all the seasonings, I've got some oyster sauce, soy sauce. A dash of sugar. Now that sugar is really important here because you really want to balance between those salty flavors and a little bit of sweetness as well. And then finally, I want a few good pinches of salt. Now just blend that until it's nice and smooth. Mm, that smell, I can smell the garlic and the pepper and the cumin. Mmm, delightful. Now, one extra tip here for really getting that marinade right inside those chicken pieces is I'm going to slice through to the bone, slice through the meat so that we're getting some extra nooks and crannies for all of marinade to permeate. Slicing the chicken like this also helps it cook faster in the oil, which is good. So I'm using thighs and drumsticks today because you know that's just the way I like to roll but if you would like to use chicken breast or a mixture of pieces totally up to you okay and these bone in thighs look quite large so I'm going to slice them in half okay now I'm going to put these chicken pieces into a bag and now that super fragrant marinade goes on top now we just close that up and give that bag a really good shake. We're going to massage those chicken pieces, make sure they're all getting a load of marinade all over them. So this is a super intense marinade, so we don't need an overnight or a couple of day scenario. Just one to two hours is perfectly fine. Let's open this up and see what we've got. Ah, oh, the smell is so beautiful. And now we'll get the chicken pieces nice and evenly coated in some rice flour. That's what's going to give us that super epic crunch. Looks like these guys are having a roll in the snow. Now for the part where the magic happens, the deep frying. So I want this oil to be hot, but not too hot. So we're looking at about 170 degrees Celsius, about 320 Fahrenheit, because the chicken's going to spend about eight to 10 minutes in here. Now, if you don't have a thermometer, you can use a wooden spoon and you're just looking for some fast paced little bubbles surrounding that wooden spoon. That tells you you're ready to go. Now, safety first, be gentle here. Just slide the chicken pieces in away from you. Now, you're gonna wanna do this in batches so that you give each piece a chance to get its own little patch of oil in there. And I really like to tend to them as I'm cooking. So I'm turning them over, making sure there's no really hot spots at the bottom of the chicken pieces because we wanna get an even color all over the outside. What we want is a really beautiful, dark, even crust. Wow, looks good, they're smelling good. The color is unbelievable. You guys are gonna love this one. There's just something about fried chicken that's so joyful. Now, as with anything that's just come out of hot oil, you want to sprinkle them with some salt. And now onto the next batch. So you can keep the first batch in the oven and keep that nice and warm while you're doing the second batch. And now my absolute favorite part, listen to the sound of that chicken. It's ridiculous. Now, traditionally with this Hut Yai fried chicken, you serve it with crispy, crunchy shallots. So you want plenty of those. And then you want a sweet chili sauce. Now, I like my sauces to be spicy, so I'm going for a spicy sweet chili and just a little sprinkling of coriander on there as well. Wow, you guys are really gonna love this one. 
<laughs> okay, friends, if you are a fan of fried chicken, and you know I am, <laughs> you need to try this version, which is hugely popular in Indonesia and Malaysia. And the thing that makes it so special is this beautifully spiced marinade that we're gonna make first up. So what you wanna do is get yourself uh, some fennel seeds. We've got a few dried spices here. I wanna toast them first because that will release all their amazing aromas and flavors. So fennel seeds into a pan, some cumin seeds and some coriander seeds. Now you just wanna keep these guys moving around in the pan. I don't want them to burn. I just want them to heat up and start smelling amazing. So once those spices start to really perfume the air, that's when you know you're good to go. Uh, I wanna pop those into my mortar and just grind that to a really fine powder. So this is the kind of texture that you want. And oh my goodness, those spices smell so good already. Just pop those into a bowl for later. And now onto the rest of the spice paste. So I wanna start off with some shallots. These are the red Asian shallots. You could also use French eschalots if they're easier to find in your area. And some garlic, some ginger, and now some galangal. So that's this guy here, that's peeled and like roughly chopped. This is what your galangal looks like. Um, it's got like a, a pink sort of papery skin. It sort of looks like ginger, but it's not. It has like a much more of a, almost like a pine wood kind of citrusy smell than ginger does. So look, if you can't get a hold of this one, just leave it out. If you can, it really is worth adding though. And then one more beautiful aromatic here. I want some lemongrass. Just want to give that a bit of a bruise. And then the first few layers are always a bit tough, so I like to take those out. And then finally slice. And then a really good pinch of salt here. And now pound that to a rough paste. Okay, so this is currently smelling amazing. Um, and this is also what it should look like. Just like a rough paste is fine. Now grab a hold of your chicken. I'm using some bone in thigh and drumsticks because you know me, I am a legs and thighs kind of girl. Uh, you could use whatever pieces that you like. Just put that paste on top. Now throw over that spice mix you made earlier. And I want some turmeric here as well. This is gonna give us a really lovely golden color on our chicken and give that a really good mix. Okay, so if you are really organized, which I generally am not, but if you are, you could leave that chicken to marinate overnight. That would be really extra special, but I'm just gonna keep going here. Uh, what I do wanna do before I progress any further on that chicken is, let's chit chat about our oil setup. So um, I'm gonna use a wok and what I find when you're cooking or frying things at home is that it, when you get the um, meat falling to the bottom or the chicken falling to the bottom of the pan, you get these like really brown hot spots and uneven cooking. So what you can do is use a really small um, round cake rack um, and pop that into your oil and that will keep the chicken from hitting the bottom of the pan. So that's optional. Look, if you don't have it, just keep your chicken turning, but it's a really good way to get even color. Now back to the chicken. I wanna do this at the last minute because I want the batter. The batter will start to get really thick the longer it sits. Um, that's okay, just add a, a little bit of water if it starts to look really thick, but um, I just like to do it before I start frying. Now make sure your oil is hot first of all. Grab a wooden spoon, pop that in, and I want some nice, furious little bubbles here. Okay, that's looking good. Now let's get onto the chicken. So I want an egg. And some corn flour or cornstarch if you're in the US. And just give that a really good mix. And the key here is that it's a little rough and ready, which is what I want, because you'll see when I get this mixed up, we've got lots of like little craggly bits all over the chicken. So just mix as much as you can. So if you have a look here, you can see lots of little lumpy bits of batter. That's gonna crisp up and be all like crispy <laughs> and golden and delicious. So I want it kind of to look rough and ready here. So now we get to do the part that I love the most. I literally live for this part where we get to fry the chicken. Nice, all right, let's get a piece in there. I wanna see it bubbling away. Now you want to do this in batches and the reason you 
do that is the reason why everyone tells you to do things in batches is because if you get too much stuff in your hot oil, your oil does no is no longer hot. <laughs> the temperature drops, which means you're not getting that really nice crispiness happening. So that's the whole reason for the batch cooking thing. Now Get these guys, just so kind of leave them for a couple of minutes and then I want you to keep turning them every so often for about 10-15 minutes until they're beautifully golden and cooked through. Alright guys, let's take a look at this amazing thing that's happening in our wok right now. Look at that chicken, I mean, oh, the crispy crust, all that stuff around the outside is just into the most wondrous thing ever. Okay, let's get these guys out. Now you definitely want to hit that chicken with a little bit of extra salt as well. And there you go, my version of AM Goreng. Beautifully spiced, crispy chicken. Let's just make sure we've done a good job here. Oh, that chicken looks so good. Mm. You know, good fried chicken just really is such a joy. This one in particular, because you've got all those beautiful aromatics, plus the spices, plus that like crispy texture. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So good. Yum. Okay guys, I cannot even with these wings. They are so freaking good. Like they get so crispy, like glass shatteringly crispy. And then you put the glaze on, but they still stay really crispy. I mean, they're just, they're so good. And <laughs> they're actually really easy to make. Couple of little techniques though, we gotta get right just to get that earth shattering crispiness. So let's get going on the wings first of all. Ah, oh, this one is so exciting. Ah, oh, can't wait. Um, all right, salt. We wanna salt our wings and you want like a generous amount of salt here. A lot of the salt kind of falls off. So I want like a really well seasoned wing here. And just a little bit of pepper. And then just give these a mix. Really get in there with your hands. Make sure that salt is giving some love to each little wing in there. Right, just let that seasoning work its magic just while we get everything else ready. And now for the glaze. So this is a soy based glaze, so I want some soy sauce. And some sugar. Some apple cider vinegar. I kind of like the apple cider vinegar because it adds a little bit of fruitiness, a little bit more interest to the sauce, but just regular white vinegar would be fine as well. And now here comes the spicy. So I'm using some Korean gochujang chili paste. Looks like this guy in the red tub. I go through so much of this stuff. It has like a, well, it's a fermented chili paste. So you get the spicy, but then you get an, an additional like salty savoriness that really kind of boosts the flavor of anything you're adding it to. And now some hot mustard as well. And we're gonna add a really intense garlic kind of hit to this one as well. So I wanna grate in three cloves. And for those of you who know me well enough by now on my channel, there's always more spice you can add. So I'm gonna add a little bit more dried red chili. This one is like an optional, but it kind of infuses that sauce with a little bit more kick. Now you just need to cook this for a couple of minutes just until everything's dissolved. And that's it, we can leave that alone until we're ready to glaze our wings. All right, so let's get back to the crispy wing part. And what I wanna do here is get my wings into some corn flour. Now, corn flour is what we call corn starch outside of the US, so just to uh, clear up any confusion there. You could also use potato starch as well. The corn flour or potato starch gives a really light coating uh, and makes everything really crispy, much lighter than all purpose flour here. So 
definitely go with either of those options. And make sure you're tapping off the excess. I don't want these wings to be super flowery or to have too much of a coating on the outside. I just want a really thin, very crispy layer on the outside. All right, so let's work some magic here now. I'm just gonna test my oil and what I want is some nice little active bubbles around that chopstick. Now, chicken pieces go in. So we're gonna fry this chicken twice and the double fry is going to give us that extra, extra crispiness that we're after. And there's a couple little things here. So one, I'm gonna do something that I'm constantly telling you guys not to do. And that is, I'm just gonna overcrowd my pan here because uh, this chicken is gonna cook for this first fry for 20 minutes. And I actually don't want the oil that hot. So putting all the chicken in at once and letting it go kind of keeps the temperature not too hot. So there is method to the madness, everyone. Now I just like to keep the chicken moving every so often. And yeah, 20 minutes. Make yourself a cup of tea. Check your Instagram. Probably not enough time to watch something on Netflix, but you know, I'm sure you can find something to do. All right, these guys are looking good. They're a kind of like pale golden color. But the real thing that we've done here is kind of expelled all of that moisture that's in the chicken and prepping them for the, like the extra crispy second fry. So anyway, get these draining on a paper towel. And again, what I'm trying to do is remove as much moisture as possible, hence the paper towel. And while I'm waiting for that chicken to kind of drain and dry out a little, I'm gonna just clean up my oil here, scoop out any little bits and pieces. All right, now just wait for that oil to heat up again ever so slightly. And now chicken back into the oil for their extra crispy bath this time. This is where we're going for color as well. And now we need to exercise a little more patience. We're nearly there guys, 10 minutes until these guys are like so super deluxe crispy. All right, so this chicken is looking pretty delightful right now. Uh, let's get it out. And this time I'm gonna get them out onto a baking rack that's gonna make it easier for me to glaze these babies. Look at that golden color and then listen to this sound. That's just like the most incredible kind of music you could ever hear. Crispy wing music, my favorite. All right, let's do some glazing here, guys. Now this glaze is super intense, so I just need a nice light little layer of that sweet and spicy goodness. Now turn them over and get both sides. Jeez, these wings have gotten some love today, haven't they? All right, the most loved wings in the world. And now a little smattering of sesame seeds. out onto a serving plate. And there you go guys, like the crispiest wings you've ever tried, honestly. And they'll sit around and maintain their crispiness. Like, it's just like a magical wing. It's a magic wing. Let me, let me see, I'll test it out and let you know. 
Mmm. Listen to that crunch. Ah. And the flavor. Mmm. Like just a hint of that beautiful spiciness, but then like sweet and tangy as well. Ah. Mmm. I mean, can't even deal with these. They are just so good. Amazing. If you've got any comments or questions, pop them below. And if you enjoyed the video, why not hit that subscribe button plus the little bell one, and that way you'll get notified every time I release a new video. Thanks, guys.